a uh, maybe you had a Florida room that was uh, was glassed in to where you're not getting the fresh air all the time, or at least in the winter months. Uh, Desert Rose, another one, just a neat plant. That one blooms. You know, not necessarily quite as uh, effective as the filtration, but it does offer you know some some air you know because all plants do take in carbon dioxide, giving releasing uh, oxygen. Yeah, that's just how they that's how they work. But NASA had gone through the 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 five the six I had there the Sansevieria, the spider plant, bamboo, areca palm, peace lily, and Gerber daisies as being are they in the space plants. station right now? I don't know. I don't think they're in the space station right now. Um, and I forget where I found that on. But they must they must have night. been studying them for a reason. Then. I think they they were yeah you know, looking for one yeah you know, plants uh, air filtration you know oxygen makers within our house our office yeah, yeah, yeah. and things like that so it's not just to bring the plants in the the plant on your desk in the office actually does play a, a role in your health and well being. So my not peperonia it is is. Is a healthy plant. Actually, it looks really good. It does. It's an amazing. It's the best. That's the best that plant's looked in about three years. And isn't it amazing how close it came to, to being, being dead? Yeah, yes, in, in yeah. pepperonia heaven. That's it. Yeah, in the compost pile of <laughs> life. Yeah. <laughs> and you know where that came from? I think I shared this with you. Uh, Kenny's place. Yes. It was. Yeah. A, it was a gift from it's them. From Kenny's they, place. They came on the air one time and. And it lived in the same pot for I don't know how long till we finally. You replanted it. I replanted it. A year ago? It's been a two while. Years, two years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it looks great now. No more fungus gnats. And that's, you know, when you... And part of the reason the fungus gnats came probably, even though it did seem to like the coffee, you know, because we always, I always go back to using coffee a little bit as a fertilizer. I think it was just too much. And so it had changed the pH. The plant wasn't looking real good. Um, when we did get it outside and got it flushed out, how dark the water was coming yeah. through. <laughs> so everything is in moderation on yeah. these kind of things. Uh, plant fertilizers, moderation, especially on house plants. That's why I say if you re- if you have some house plants, repotting them in the springtime is a good idea. Is because you would uh, they're going to begin to grow again. They've gone all winter in that same pot in the house. Get them some nice, fresh soil. Knock off the old soil. Get you some new soil. A lot, size bigger pot is uh, the best way to go. Is you, know, you don't step up a giant pot. You go for, If you had something in a six-inch pot, you would go up to an eight. If it is maybe a, a plant that's going to get significantly larger, uh, you might step up two sizes. So instead of from a six to a ten, if it's going to be a plant that's going to right, do some right, significant right. growing now that it has reached a certain age. Um, and this is just, you know, just get them up. Some of the plants, the peace lilies, one that if it starts to get too big, you can just take a section of that off, good sharp knife, pass off what's left, start back over with a small plant because it, and I always hate to say it, it is a plant that is given a lot during mm. uh, funerals because it is an easy care plant. And here's a living plant to remember mm. your loved one. Yeah. Um, it's, you yeah. know. Just one of those kind of plants that are they you know, are done like that, and but and they get huge. People leave them in the pot, and it's two, three, four years, and they go, "It's so big, I can't move it anymore." Well, if you still want the piece of it, take a piece, share the other one, or however, and keep you a nice piece of it, and and keep growing. Do you know what I wanted to? Can I just say something to you and then just have a response? Not really a question. Yeah. But you know how when we talk about maintaining plants. Right. There, I was watching this thing on the internet about how Disney takes care of their plants. They will literally, I, like when nobody's there at night, mm-hmm. remove whole trees. Yes. And then replant a whole tree in its place mm-hmm. so that when the guests get there in the morning, in the they'd, course of they'd a have nighttime. Never, they'd have never known that one disappeared. So it, I guess there is a question. Why would they do that? I mean, what is the purpose the for aesthetics. Rem- if that tree is beginning to to die back, just I mean, can you imagine money not being an object for them? <clears throat> they grow their own, though. They have a whole other area. But they've got to pay those guys. Oh yeah, they well, they're pay on much. staff. Yeah, they're, they're they're probably paid pretty well. I mean, yeah. all of those topiaries that are done, uh, all of those hanging baskets are generally replaced. I'm sure, you know, Isn't that probably amazing, a couple of though? times a if month. Think, think Just the whole that. horticultural department in Disney um, is massive. By the way, 
There's a new, I have this in my news this morning, there's a new uh, attraction opening up uh, in Kissimmee. It's called, I'll tell you what it is and what's got to do with you, it's called uh, Chocolate, cho- Chocolate, Chocolate Land or something. It's Chocolate, mm. Chocolate Kingdom. Chocolate Kingdom. called Chocolate Kingdom. And here's what it has to do with a, with a gardening show. They will have a greenhouse with cocoa trees in them. Ah, look at there. Now what is a cocoa tree? It's a co- it's a cocoa plant. Okay. It's yeah. Where they and I guess they Could we grow that here? I don't know if it would grow here. I know we can grow coffee here, which but we needs don't. but we don't I don't think our growing conditions are not perfect for it. You can grow like a coffee plant in the house, but to grow it out in the yard, you probably have to grow it for a few years in the house and then gradually acclimate it. Really? How well it would really do because of our, uh, even though the, you know, because you figure most of the coffee comes from mountainous areas in South America where that climate is actually very different uh, you know, cool, moist springs up in those mountain right, areas right, right. where we have hot, dry and uh, so again, that kind of uh, Growing condition just may not be perfect hmm. for us. I guess. I guess if it w- if it could be done and made money with somebody would have done it. Somebody's already, going right? to figure out how to do it. Yeah. yeah. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question. Of course, my daughter gave me an orchid plant. Okay. And I don't know what to do with it. I don't want to kill it, but um, it's all. They always are look so pot bound. Do you take them out of that pot and put them in some other dirt? Mother soil. Or? No, with with the orchid, you. Uh, I would wait till spring before I did anything because they are, you know, the the shorter days that are you know, that are beginning to occur now. Even though we don't have cold temperatures, or you're going to keep the orchid in the house in the winter time to keep it from uh, the freezing temperatures, mm-hmm. are still dormant in the winter time. So repotting it now would not be the best thing. I would wait till the spring. We don't use soil with orchids. If you notice, they're in moss. Um, They don't even really need to be in anything. The reason we usually put them in a clay pot or we put them in those wooden baskets is to display them. In nature, they grow in the tops of trees in rainforests uh, without soil. They just grow in amongst uh, the limbs of the trees. So we use them. We put them either a clay pot is a very good uh, a suitable container for them. They may actually make special ones that have an oval-shaped hole on the sides of the pot, not just a hole in the bottom for proper drainage and also so that the roots can escape. Um, or the wooden baskets that are... They're kind of like three tiers of little quarter-inch by quarter-inch wood pieces that are just stacked together, and that allows the roots to come out. A little bit of sphagnum moss, but the the long stringy kind um, is a better medium, unless you can find the real small uh, lava rock. I like that one to hold the roots, because all you're doing is holding the roots in place and holding a little bit of moisture. In the winter months, I would just water it. Um, Don't allow it to dry out. Take it, put it, set it in the shower. Let the water rinse all the way across it. That'll water it real well. And then just hang it back up or set it somewhere where it gets bright light but not direct sun. In the in the warm months, once springtime comes, if you repot it, you can then just take and hang it out in a tree or on a patio where, again, it's not in direct sun, bright light, shaded, and we just sort of rinse them with the garden hose, or you know the rain will begin to take care of them, and they're they're really fairly easy care. Just don't freeze them, you know, don't allow them to get frozen. And in the springtime, you could start using uh, something like an orchid fertilizer in order to try to encourage it to bloom. Okay, so I don't I don't water it now. You I, still need to water it, just not. Um, you know, as our rains have, have slacked off, that's the way the watering would go. Don't allow it to dry out. Okay. But uh, you don't need to keep it, you don't want to keep it wet. Okay. Yeah, I, I like to take and either, you know, use the, the, not, the sprayer in the kitchen sink. Okay. And do that or have a, you know, maybe, uh, maybe once a week, I'm not sure the humidity levels in your home, and maybe have a little spritzer bottle that you can just spray the foliage uh, every couple of days to keep the humidity level up for them. 
How about the leaves that are brown? If they're, we've got Just one snip, leaf. snip that one off. Okay, it's yeah. quite a large one. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, just cut that one off. Um, let's see, what else do I want to ask you? I guess that's it. Hmm. Well, good luck with it. They're really not too hard to grow. Um, I know there is an orchid society here in Marion County. I don't know their number. You might be able to find them online or call over to Extension and get a phone number for them that might even be able to give you some even better pointers. Okay. How about the blossoms? Once the blossoms leave, is that it? Um, If the stalk is still green, leave it on there. That's at least what I've been told is that it could bloom again on that stalk. But if once the stalk turns brown, then you can snip that off. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your help. You're welcome. I hope I can keep this one going. All right. Good luck with it. Thanks. Uh, Bye-bye. Yeah, it seems like one of those hard ones. And every once in a while you read a story about somebody getting in trouble for having an orchid. They bring it into the they, country. Yeah, bring them, bringing them in from, from overseas and, and things like that. Well, any plant material, you're not allowed to bring it in. Yeah, but huge. It, yeah. Like jail sentences. Yeah. Just, oh, well, it's... It's crazy. Well, some of them, I believe, are protected uh, species yeah, and things yeah. like that. But um, orchids, the orchids you find in the big box stores nowadays, if you see the prices on them, are... are really fairly low as yeah, compared yeah. to what it used to be to buy an orchid because before when the, when you bought an orchid you were buying serious work from a grower nowadays they're tissue cultured they're cloned oh. if you notice they all oh. look alike oh yeah now, all yeah. those flowers are exactly the same um Oh, excuse me. Tissue um, culture. That's tissue what they culture. Call it? Yeah, tissue culture. They're done in a laboratory oh. and it's cloned. Um and that has brought the price of them down, so that you know the average uh, gardener can have a few in their in their collection at, or in their greenhouse. And they really are in our area not a difficult plant to grow. You just can't forget it's there. Like I said, you can hang them out in a tree uh-huh, uh-huh. or on the side of a house. You know, if you've got a, a, a shepherd's hook somewhere where it's not going to be in sunlight. It wants bright light, but it wants a, a shaded location with filtered light coming through. And you can kind of forget about them all summer. You know, and just yeah, and that's the hard part is I know I've frozen. Oh, really? I, I have frozen more than one because it was like... <gasps> Oh yeah, I you forgot, forgot about that it. one out me, there. Is, this is way out of left field, but is it related to the mistletoe? I mean, it grows in the top of a tree. No, the mistletoe actually puts roots into the tree, oh, okay. where an orchid okay. is just a more of an air plant. Oh, its okay. roots are okay. its roots are out. Uh, you can actually tell when an orchid needs to be watered because by seeing its roots. That's why we don't put orchid roots in soil. That's not the way they grow. Orchid roots are green. They're real pale green. Huh. Well, when you see that they're beginning to get white, it needs to be watered. Huh. And you can just water it, like I said, uh, either the shower or the, the, the spray, the vegetable nozzle on, yeah, the, yeah, on yeah. the kitchen sink, Ooh. and just water them down thoroughly, and we're and then it's good. Yeah, I just looked at the clock. That's why I said, ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we're running over. I just, I just didn't realize. All right, well, I was enjoying listening to the answer. Uh, Carolyn, always good to have another, you in Another here great show. Doing the show and inspiring us to go get some house plants today. Get some house plants in the house. Get, bring some, you know, get ready if you got any that are outside um get ready to bring them in if you've got them outside before it gets cold water them well check them for insects and yeah you don't want to bring the bugs in is that the fire alarm that the, might be is that the fire alarm going off no all right well we're okay <laughs> uh thank you carolyn thanks larry we will take a little break carolyn biddle and joe fowler are next with realty reality we'll be right back so you got to please yourself people came Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! ABC News Now. I'm Karen Chase. Mitt Romney says his comments weren't elegantly made, but he didn't take them back. The candidate is heard referring to supporters of President Obama as Americans who don't pay taxes and feel entitled to government handouts. Romney says he wants to help all Americans. A big win for Buckingham Palace. A French magazine has 24 hours to hand over all its pictures of Princess Catherine sunbathing or face a fine from a French court. Prosecutors are also planning to pursue criminal charges against the magazine. Chicago teachers vote today on whether the latest contract offer from the nation's third largest school district is good enough for them to end their strike.